Hey, everybody, just a quick message from Bob and Barker's Network. We would like to remind everybody that certain topics of discussion may not be comfortable for all listeners. Certain viewpoints may not reflect those of our partners, sponsors, affiliates, our hosts, or that of our guests. We would like to encourage everybody to keep a respectful and open climate of discussion for all topics, no matter how disturbing they may be. So viewer discretion is advised. This world has gone insane. It is absolutely no secret. But tonight, Saturday night, you are about to experience the true measures of what that insanity can bring you. Tonight, you are about to fall and fall. The one of a kind show that they'll speak into the world that you know how it's gone. Now, Meet your host, Dakota Francis, specialist of exchange, and Crystal Mule, the UFO fanatic. Now, give it up, and let's see what these curious can bring you. Welcome, everybody. Jesus Christ. <laughs> honestly, <laughs> honestly, guys, you know, he's, look, he's been cloned. He's been cloned. Yes, I know he's the defect clone. I'm the handsomest. You know. What are you talking about? <laughs> Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be talking about Monsters of the of Deep. The deep. Yeah, did you, did you know that's, did you know that? that's, that's a good name, that. The Monsters of the Deep. Who do we have oh, yeah. in the chat? Who do we have in the chat? Who's that strange person that's in the chat there? To her? I, I I don't know. We we have a couple of strange hey. people. The bald and bonkers, hey. Chris. Who the hell is that? Hey. Oh, fucking so, idiot. ladies and gentlemen, we've got some strange tales from the deep tonight. But we've got some awesome pictures to show you. What we think lie below the lochs of Scotland. You know, that was when Dave Schrader was on. You ever noticed that with Dave Schrader when he says, when he says, uh, lochs. Yeah, so Americans have noticed this day, the day, the day this, oh, as if they're, as if they're like a Klingon, as if they're bringing up flame. Give me your best, tell me your best about a loch, to quote, go, go for it. Jeez, went mad, I oh, went mad, he's oh, hey, so I want your best. Wait, you were trying to, the thing is with American tourists, they're always trying to sound, hey. you know, posh in you know, the Scottish accent no. that you've uh, no, I don't know why I'm the sun busting on an Australian. I'm not giving in the day around here. But look, I seen an American tourist the other day there. And I couldn't stop laughing. I'm sorry. Two of us put up. Put up. Right? Nothing wrong there. And then off came this American tourist. He had a luminous red Caribbean shirt on with coconuts on it. A camera and a straw hat. I mean, seriously. I mean, seriously. Where do you get your dress sense for? What? I don't know what the hell they're talking about. What? That, who's, that, that, who's their talking? beaches in Scotland are nice, but not necessarily, you oh, know, uh, you know a quiet shit. I'm going to do a, an advertisement for Scotland. If you're American and you want to spend lots of money, come to Scotland and give us the tourism. See, I'm doing my bit for the it's Scottish. absolutely worth it. Oh, I it's worth it. You might, you might no, be like, oh, I hear you. You might be looking across Loch Ness and the creatures would come out to the water for only a split second and then disappear. I swear honestly, like something was making fun of me. Honestly, what, what's he like, everybody, with those eyeglasses on, those spectacles on? And people in the, the podcast say to this, honestly, you need to watch the video. You need to look at this. This is just ridiculous. Where did I you get just got told, I these are just little readers that I got at the store I work at. No, no, I know. I don't actually need glasses at all. I just po- oh. got them because I knew they were close to your frames, and people say we look alike. So, well, they're shady. 
PWI Spiritual Investigators. I did that, that was kind of sound cool. I love Loch Ness. I want to go there. Do you know something? We should go on an expedition to Loch Ness. I'll sit in the tea room overlooking the loch, right? With the binoculars to make sure they find you in Dakota, you sail out in the own boat. Don't worry. I'll phone 999 in the emergencies. What? Of course. Again, why are you the one? You? Why are you the one that always sits down in these so-called safe locations? You could actually I get your ass out and do some fucking field work. I, c- I could go and do my field work, right? But this is the thing. Everybody thinks because I'm in Scotland, Loch Ness is my next door neighbour. Loch Ness to me is about 350 miles in that direction. To me. Right? Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, so it's a, it's Why like am I busting out the Australian boards? My God. Oh my God, he's going Australian, ladies and gentlemen. Good day, mate. I, 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 that's why I came in Australian. Good day. Hey, now, don't, you get, don't you be shaking it down under. You know how to run it. That's gonna, that, see, that's, that's, that's strange because that's like a wee bit Australian, but at the same time, a slight bit of Louisiana in that. Well, both mm. accents were involved in getting drunk. So, Dakota. Do you want to show your first, ladies and gentlemen, and Sherry, hello Dobie Sock, tonight, Dakota, I've got a selection of photographs of Loch Ness and other lochs and strange creatures, but Dakota has went out of his way to get a special photo of a strange sea creature. Would you like, would you like to show it, because I think it'd be awesome, ah. and Mike, if you're watching this back, this is right up your alley. Yeah. I know Mike has already made a couple of comments like, God damn it, why is the Australian coming out? It's, it's <laughs> anyway, all right. Hey, okay, first off, but before we go into showing the picture that <laughs> are, is already borderlining getting us flagged, let me mm-hmm. explain my logic here, okay? Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Prepare yourselves. All right. Here Let's we go. steal one of your pictures real quick. Yep, still one of mine. It's supposed to be an a image of, Loch, of the monster in Loch Ness. Yes, Basically it is. depicting what we would sp- what we would label kind of a pleosaur looking like it being. Now, there's a number of theories we've talked about. When it comes to Loch Ness in particular, the two main ones are <laughs> that it's a giant eel or a giant sure. sea turtle. A giant here there's a gi- here there's a giant eel, ladies and gentlemen. That's a small yeah. one. Now, before anybody says anything, yes, if eels are get enough nutrition, they can actually get to be about 30, 40, 50 feet long. Mm-hmm. And there is actually video proof of giant eels, as well as DNA mm-hmm. samples in mm-hmm. those waters. Yes. Now, let's step out of the the lakes, the locks, the rivers, and not into mm. the ocean. I mean, imagine you're a I'm sailor. You're, you're, you're out in the hot sun. you got the water. You're probably a little hungry, a little dehydrated. Mm. And you see this. <sighs> Let's see if the chat can guess what it is. I'm genuinely Gosh. curious. Ladies and gentlemen in the chat, what do you think that the strange shaped thing is? Come on, Sherry, oh. Dobby Sock, what do you guys think it is? People on Facebook, have a look Charles at this. Charles, Charles, Dobby, uh, Lone Ranger 420. There's, um, oh, there's, 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 uh, there's Sherry. Yes, Jerry, There's right. Jerry's answer. There's Dobby, yes. a manta ray. All right. I'm out of here. All right. Come on, anybody, and gentlemen. anybody else wanting to take a bet? Come on. Place Come your on. bets. Place your bets. And when you place your bets, you've got two minutes to place your bets. Place your bets. What could this strange thing be? No, again, this is a point I want to reiterate. Think about it. You're out in the open sea. You're probably a little dehydrated. You're hungry. You're tired. You yeah. see this? 
Chad, he says, oh, now, this, this is a, re- no, no, now, this is a real f- that. This is a real photo. No. Chances are, if you go out into well, the ocean, that. Right I'm all about I will admit, if I was out in the sea and I'd been out and I was a wee bit dehydrated and I was tired and I looked across the bow and I seen that, I would think to myself, my God, what is that? That's a strange looking creature. It looks like an octopus or it looks like something else. It does look something alien. But wait to use guys. Sherry, Sherry is putting another bet on giant clam. Mm. Uh, metal ring. What? I'm good. All right. Which I go to the chat because I can't see the Facebook chat. I'm feeling it somewhere. A metal ring. Yeah, I'm monitoring the chat from the streamyard side, so there might be a bit yeah. of a delay when the answers come in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Chris, what do you think? Shall, shall we? Well, shall we see what I, it is? I mean, I mean, honestly, they're going to be shocked. I mean, they're going, they're going to be shocked. But what has? But the ladies in the room, I'm surprised you didn't know what it was. But on you go. Well, I, Sherry got it on her first try. You did get it in your first try, Sherry. This is a whale's penis. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You see, there we go. We should have had him on the show. He is a whale's penis expert. We should have had him on the show. There you go. <laughs> I'm sorry, whale David. penis expert. What the... Oh, my God. <laughs> See, Sherry got it. See, Sherry's got a keen eye. She got it in the first go. There you go. Yeah. Sherry's the one to take me if you ever go to the strange unknown. Take Sherry. Yeah. But I can see, I can see your point there. It was the core I wanted to show you that, ladies and gentlemen, because I can see your point. It does look strange. I will admit that. Exactly. I will admit that. And, and there gonna... is actually a case near here of a cryptid nothing as graphic as a giant penis that mm. I often use to kind of illustrate the point when it comes to sea creatures see right this is the thing right this is the thing that I'm going to find my post here right um, where is that the, right, this is the thing that there's an old tale in Scotland with this right and it's called the blue man now you, you've probably heard about it I'll bring this up yeah. It came something. They said that it would come out of the water and it would lure fishermen and sailors to their deaths. Right? Mm-hmm. But then we've, here's, here's a graphic drawing of it. Right? How they, they would say that these strange creatures would come up and grab the side of the hulls. Right? But here's what I'm thinking. Right? Just, just, just go with the flow here. What I'm saying, right, it is a large eel. Yeah, people, obviously, people see their faces and that. Do you, what, what's your honest opinion in this, Dakota, when, you, when we talk about the blue man? It's definitely an interesting story, but as far as your uh, connection of potential, these things being potentially a giant eel, there's a, some species of fish out there, not a lot of people realize, but the way that they're skeletal structure in their face forms yes. from certain angles look like make a human. it kind of look like a human. Like a uh, fish with a human's face. Right, and this is where I find this interesting. This is not a human's face, but I think I know what it is. We have, we have the Kelpies. Am I right there to call it? That's the Kelpies, isn't it? That is uh, the Kelpies. Uh, yeah, the, as I was taught, yes. Right. Right? What happens if the kelp is, right, is just a seahorse? You know what a seahorse looks like? Aye. What happens if it's, right, what happens if it's just got a bigger seahorse? Someone's seen that and thought, oh, that looks like a little horse. And then the tail has came forth. You know what it's like, legend, like, it's, it's the same in the ghost hunting field, oh yes, the, the, the headless horseman will come over the hill and then... Somebody who learns about that and then they'll add a little bit on. It's like the telephone game. Mm-hmm. Right? Someone adds a little bit on. That does look like seahorses. You've been have you ever been to like an aquarium like SeaWorld underneath the water? You yep. can see the big tanks. And seahorses can get really quite big. They can oh, run yeah. about Yeah. So do you think it, if that is maybe coming into warmer waters, it's coming to colder waters by accident. Alright? 
a fisherman's looked at that and thought, oh my god, told the story in the, the inn at night when he's went home, and the, that that truth has come out, and they, they've made strange creatures. What's in the chat there, Dakota? Yeah. I can't see it. Yeah, I was just watching some of Sherry's comments about the seahorses, the males yeah. carrying babies. The woman actually does get pregnant, but then she shoots the impregnated yeah. egg back into the man. But anyway, what a lot of another thing a lot of people don't realize is that a lot of these alleged cryptids, as a whole, doesn't matter by land or by sea. Yeah. There was a lot more variety to life on Earth than what people realize. Oh, good God. Look, look at the, let's what? just take the deepest part of the ocean. No one right. knows what really is down there, right? The deepest, what is the deepest ocean? Is it eight miles deep? Nine miles? I think it's bigger than that. Right, it's, more, it's more than that, right? You Can you imagine... What lies? There's actually proof out. I mean, Dakota sent me a, a video the other day, a giant turtle. That was impressive. Can you uh, imagine? Look, like, I was watching a thing the other night. It was Geographic Channel, and they were talking about in the the 17th century, 18th century, ships reported giant octopus. Right. Obviously, obviously, through time, there's been fishing. We've overfished everything, right? I'll admit it, we'll have overfished everything. But what is lurking deep, deep, deep under the ocean that made the myth and the legend? Because all it takes is that that to come up once and somebody sees it. Well, here's here's a thing. You can look up old photos, for old-timing fishing photos, and you can see that the fisherman is standing there. It looks like, like a man of average height. So let's mm-hmm. get, say about five, 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 nine, right about that range. Mm-hmm. You look like you could fit like 12 of that guy into one of these fish that they caught. Yeah. We've overfished so much that a lot of what we see now is a lot smaller. They say elephants are actually yeah. not producing tusks because of poachers. See, that's the thing, right? You've got to remember, long ago there was a mass, massive fish in the sea. So creatures could eat a lot more, right? Mm-hmm. Let's just st- let's take a eel, right? Say there's a eel and it's sixty feet long, right? And this is by back to the 1700s. We are no trawling the seas as much then. We didn't have mass machinery to troll the seas, so that could eat and eat and eat and eat and get bigger and bigger and bigger, right? We're Loch Ness. Now, here's an interesting fact. What happens if it is, right? What happens if there is a Neil in Loch Ness, right? Think about this, right? And the reason it's in there is because this it's rich in fish. Because Loch Ness isn't fish that much. Either you'll get the odd person salmon fishing or something like that, or fishing at the side of the water. But it's no trawled. It's no overfished with these big ships. Right? Mm-hmm. I mean, this is what this is where I find it very interesting. What happens if there is like a tunnel system that leads to the sea, that leads to the loch? And this is how the thing's travelling about. Because there's... Well, there there's yeah. Yeah. But the, a lot of people say it doesn't exist, but I, they've actually mapped one tunnel system. But they don't know how far in it goes. But it's, it makes you wonder... What is actually in that water? Here's the thing. A lot of people can't really seem to get that ground penetrating technology. Yes, nowadays, if you get the high end models, the latest editions, they can go pretty far. Oh, yeah. But there's a certain point, especially if you have very dense terrain, which the area of the highlands where Loch Ness sits is. Yes. You're going to you lose signal. You go to remember. If you go to try anything to track it. You go to remember taste with the Scottish mountains and scenery. There is a lot of old volcanic 
it was a volcanic region at once, right? And there is a lot of tunnel systems and lava tubes, mostly. So what happens if there's just one that connects the or the lost? Because here's actually right, I'll bring this photo. This is Loch Mo- Lo- Mora, right, up in Scotland. I can't pronounce it quite right. But let me bring this up. Yeah, let me see. This, this is the where is it? Where's that? Where's that, where's that picture of the Loch? Right like, here, right. Now Loch Ness looks similar to this. This one's actually smaller. Loch Ness not that far from here, but it's as you can see, it's quite a mountainous range. Right, mm-hmm. but what's to say that there is not like a, a, an ancient cave system that connects all of these? Because like, here's an image on the left, you've got Nessie, right? On the right, you've got the the Morag, right? That's what's meant to be in that in that lock that I just showed you. Now you can see they do look similar. Admit it, they do look similar. But what happens if, right? What happens if? Or as as just a giant, you know, I mean, what else could it possibly be? Some people have said, right, oh, but it could be a prehistoric, uh, it could yeah. be like a dinosaur, right? But I don't, get, look, look, come on. People have been searching that loch. Now, here's the, here's the thing that I got. People have been searching that loch for a long time, both lochs, right? And they never, ever find anything. But here's an interesting fact that I knew. Do you know... When Anil detect Anil can detect if there's something far away in the water. Do you know what Anil does if it detects? It hides. And it always looks for like a tunnel or a bit in the rock where it can go inside. See when it does that guys? They actually reckon Anil can hear a boat, a man made engine three or four miles away. Just just by the by the the noise the noise that it puts out in the water. So like, you're a giant eel. You're in Loch Ness eating all the fish, right? You can hear that. You can hear something coming. What do you do? You sail into a tunnel system. The boat goes wow. over with sonar, and all it picks up is rocks. You have a very good point, actually. Yeah. But this is going off of my own observations when I was at right. Loch Ness. Because there's so much tourist activity in that area, yes. that would actually affect the animals' behaviors. There was like, they found in chimps, there was a study done where they've actually found that when the chimps are in a habitat, they don't feel like they're being observed. Yeah. Like they'll be a lot more brutal. They'll eat a lot more meat. They'll hit, yeah, go into tribal wars a lot more. Then, as compared to the chimps that knew that they are being watched, mm. that's when you see them eating the vegetation, the bananas, you know, trying to be all nice and docile. If they're right. used to a lot of tourism, the animals will think, okay, that's normal, that's nothing to worry about. They might actually start coming up. But whenever that happens, right. I you think say that, that that's not yield babies coming up to see what the heck's going on in the surface. That's what I was going to say. You've got to remember that eels are very... I watched a program about this, I actually tried to learn about this kind of stuff last night. Eels are very territorial. They'll, they'll hold their area, right? But they do not like incomers, like humans, like people that live above the surface. They will hide, right? But see the babies? They don't. The babies go up for a look because they're stupid and they don't know any better. And all these sightings that people have seen what happens if that is just the babies coming up, like you say? I mean, going back to that Loch Morar, they say that whenever there's a dip in sightings when it comes to Loch Ness, all of a sudden, yeah. there's more sightings in that lock of its monster. So they already believe that there's some sort <laughs> of... That's what, I was just about to say. That's what I was just about to say. Right? That is what I was about to say. When there's nane in Loch Ness, there's always sightings in the other loch. But when there's sightings mm. in Loch Ness, there's no sightings in the other loch. That means their breeding grounds are right next to each other. Look, this is what people don't understand. There's cave systems in this planet, right, that are massive. That go for hundreds of miles underneath landscapes, right? Mm. Scotland's quite a small country, right? It doesn't mm. take much. All it takes is a couple of lava tubes. Right, 
I get they might be like quarter mile deep, right? But these are sea creatures. These can breathe underwater, right? Just swim through. But I don't know how you can actually do this. Maybe we should actually bring on an expert about this to quote, because I think that'd be quite interesting. It would. It would be. But it's see, right? Wait, uh, this one's the Loch Ness, right? Right. Right, this is the Loch Ness, this is that, and that is an illustration of Loch Ness and the, the kind of periodic period, kind of like the dinosaurs just before the kind, obviously the the asteroid heart of the comet, right? But here is Loch Moor, right? Do you know think there's some similarities there? I think there is, I think they're the same, I think they're both the same creature. And it's uh, just travel a lot. Yeah, In fact, it. actually, Sherry actually just posted a question that's pretty relevant to the conversation. Here's the thing. Eels, they can have like five, ten babies at once. Yes. And when I was there, there Nessie wasn't alone. Something was swimming with her. Right, this is this is another theory that I watched the other night about this, and this I find very interesting. They talk about tunnel systems linking everything up. What happens if there's an aqua? You know, you know how you get underground kind of aquas, aquifers full of water. Mm-hmm. What happens if somewhere there's an underground aqua, right? Aquifer splitting up, maybe Loch Ness, and Loch Moor, right? Imagine this is in the middle, bit deep. What happens if they're breeding in there? And that's where the, they are all the time, more like. But they come into the loch to feed. Or train their young. I mean, here's a, here's a photo. This was meant to be Loch more, right? Let's have a look at this one. What's your opinion on that, Dekla? It looks a lot like the thing I saw in Loch Ness. Yes. Yeah. Which is... Which is quite strange because I'll tell you what, right, see see a eel eels will come to the surface now and again. Chasing their prey. Mm-hmm. That's what they do. They'll chase their prey. If you've got like say a salmon or a trout doing its thing, swimming along, right? And it comes up, it will come up for that. But I will say this, there is other animals to that it could be. What about what about a giant Pike. What's your thoughts on that, Dakota? That's actually one of the theories for some of the alleged lake monsters near me. Yeah. See, I, I actually I've got a couple of these pond locks next to me, and someone they're, they're very rich in pike, mm-hmm. and someone caught one in there, and my god, it was huge. It was mm-hmm. absolutely massive, and. I was watching something the other day there in Japan. They've actually got these, uh, you know how they collect like, Japanese fish, you know, like, the, the big goldfish. Well, was this kind of, yeah, yeah. They had one of these, and the thing was like 60 or 70 years old, right? It was huge. I've never seen anything like it in my entire life. But Loch Ness and Loch Moor are rich in fish. Yes, you can fish them with a fishing rod. But they don't, they don't troll them, and I think this is the perfect source of nutri- nutrients for whatever's living in the depths. It could very well be it. Going back to the whole dinosaur theory, <laughs> they say it's highly unlikely because the math doesn't necessarily check out. Because by the time pleosaurs were said to be around, Loch Ness wasn't. Yeah. It was mostly froze yeah, over. Yeah, yeah. You see, this is what a lot of people don't realise, right? See, see the hills and mountains, Scotland. They were made from the ice, the ice age. Mm-hmm. So, after that, imagine two mile thick ice on top of Scotland right now, right? Everywhere, right? And when that when that was moving, it created valleys and mountains, right? And then when that melted. Those valleys and mountains where the water could not run off filled up with water. Mm-hmm. 
And they've been that way ever since. They've been, it's like Loch Lomond. It's well known to be the same. It was at the Ice Age, filled it up. Loch Ness, it was caused of that. There is a lot of deep lochs in Scotland. Very deep lochs in Scotland. Um, and there is, honestly, it, 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 it makes you wonder what is down there in the dark depths. I mean, I was up in Oban a couple of years ago, and I was going along uh, this loch, and it's quite a small loch. It's only like maybe two miles long, three miles long, and it's jet black because it's something like six, seven, eight hundred feet more deep. Mm-hmm. And what it was, it was a natural valley. But when the ice receded, it left this cut out of the earth, and then it filled up with water. Mm-hmm. It, it's what's, what's in the chat here. Is there anybody else saying anything? Just, it's because I need to keep going back here. I'm just kind of monitoring. But, no, I get what you're saying. It, a lot of the math doesn't check out for it to necessarily be a dinosaur. Now, has it been unheard of of previously extinct species all of a sudden popping out of nowhere? No, that's happened. There was a fish that thought to be extinct for over four million years caught off the, caught off the coast of South Africa. Yeah. We sat there in the chat. Kelly Drews, how did they get those photos? I don't know. The guy was out maybe a walk and took a photo. Those other photos of dinosaurs aren't photos. They're artist astraliations. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't go back in time. They are, that's an artist that's drew that. I'm I was sure about to say, that's... that was actual photos of fucking dinosaurs. This is a completely different show than what we that... need to be having. Yes, that is not a picture. No, that... I think they're talking more of the sculpture looking ones. The, the sculpture ones, what do you mean? The, yes. on, I mean, Bruce with my computer, talking like this one. Well, yeah, they're obviously illustrations too. They're not real. Those are not real. They're computer gen. They're computer generated, right? Mm. I mean, this one on the other hand, this one's real, and that's that's a diver looking at a eel, and that's a baby eel, guys. That is oh. a baby. So, God, you know, can you imagine meeting its mother or its father? You know, there's this. I just thought of this, you know, because Sherry did mention a thing about water snakes. This is a f- footage from the Amazon rainforest where these divers are in the Amazon River, and all of a sudden, this huge, like, 60-foot snake approaches them. Not they mm-hmm. wasn't attacking. But this thing was under the water so long, it was developing barnacles. It had algae growing off of it. Its eyes practically mm-hmm. looked like it had glaucoma. It was so cloudy. <laughs> it probably, it probably did. Probably it did. Probably. Some, some form it, of it. It, it, so, so it probably saved those guys, the fact that they did have glaucoma. <laughs> no, no, it was up there. It was letting it pet them, and it knew it, it was dealing with humans. Do you think, right, here's an interesting question, right? Say, right let's just say there is a giant eel in Loch Ness. A really big one that shares the lava tubes and that. Do you think there's any way, and this is for people in the chat too and people listening to this, do you think there's any way it could become intelligent? Because you think about it, if it's been there, it might be like a hundred years old or it might be, you don't know how long these things can last. And a place where it's not hunted, and a place where it's got fresh food and plenty of water, because obviously it lives under the water, but a place that it doesn't, it doesn't get hunted by man. Yeah, you'll get the old boat going across with sonar and stuff. Mm-hmm. Do you think there's maybe a slight bit of intelligence in it? Oh, yeah, obviously. Do you think it Animals knows... Animals ain't dumb. I know that, I know that. But do you think it's intelligent to the point where it knows to hide and it knows... It knows the a big rumble of thunder there, a big thunderstorm above us. Um, but do you think it's intelligent enough? In the same aspect as we're intelligent. What's your thoughts on that? Let me let me just go bounce back to the uh, Jeff Meldrum episode when we were right. talking about Bigfoot. Okay. 
Yep. The uh, hunter's analogy he used, where they sent out, like, a group of 30 hunters. They were in, like, a 15-square-mile radius. All, nearly every single one of those hunters said that there was absolutely nothing in that designated area. Mm. Yet, wildlife services had at least 30 deer tracked that was staying in that area. Yeah. It does not take much. It's a basic instinct to want to hide. Now, as far as them being intelligent enough to interact with humans, that yeah, we've seen that with eels all the time. I'll, I'll say that's right, and there's no be stock. There's no be most creatures have certain amount of intelligence. I will say this: I was out a walk a couple of months ago. I was walking through the woods. Uh, my my area is notorious for deer, right? and I sat down in this little bench, and right in front of me there's like a bush, nothing else. And I'm sitting there. I could hear this movement. And it knew I was there. There was a deer in there. It was. It knew I was there. And it was hiding. It knew I was there. And it was watching me. And I knew it was there too. And you know, I waited until I started to walk away. And then it, it ran out. It was really quick. Mm-hmm. But what I'm saying is, no, what I'm trying to say is we're Loch Ness. Right? A lot of people say we're Loch Ness. It's got super, supernatural tendencies. What I mean is it's, it's got like... It's got the intelligence of like a human. I don't think it hurts. I think it's just a highly intelligent eel that's really good at hiding. And it's done that for so long. It teaches its young. I just decided to pull up a little something here. Just to kind of gauge. Basically, eel lifespans. Average lifespans of an eel. So what's an out lifespan? Usually, they can live up from about 70 to 30 years. That's officially documented. Right. right. Now, like you said, you, you don't necessarily know unless you can identify the exact type of species because there is a thing called biological immortality. Right. And for people who don't know what that means, basically that means if they don't get sick or severely injured, they can technically live forever. Yeah. Lobsters, yes. they're biologically Lobster. immortal. Yes. In fact, there's apparently a cult out there trying to raise a giant leviathan lobster. Well, here's an, actual interest, here's an interesting fact. Octopuses. Did you know, I, this is discussion and they shouldn't do it, but this is what they do. You'll notice Japanese, what they'll do is they'll, they'll cut their tentacles off and then they'll throw the, the body back into the sea. You know why? Tentacles will grow back. Because the tentacles grow back. Yeah. And I think there is creatures out there in the depths that we've not even met yet. We've not even met. They're that deep. They're that deep under the sea. And there's things in the woods and there's things in the hills and there's things that I don't think will be encountered for a long time because they're intelligent like Bigfoot or or Mothman. And you go down this road again, you go down this road again with these creatures. You know? I do think there is supernatural things that happen. I will say that. There's, there is supernatural things that happen. There's, but I do think a lot of this stuff can be explained like the eel. Because it... Why is it been seen in so many locks next to Loch Ness, the same one? It looks exactly the same. Mm-hmm. You know, just reading the chat there. Yeah. So that, that's very interesting. That. Well, so, what other myth- so what other mythical creatures live beneath the waves, Dakota? Well, here's, I've mentioned that for this episode, I was going to try to approach this from a debunker's point of view. Yeah. Because there's a lot of people in this community that want to jump on the mystical bandwagon when what they're trying to explain off could very well be completely natural an Mm -hmm. example i like to use kind of dip into ghosts real quick there's this uh elementary school that's actually just down the road from me that i investigated at it was just celebrating its 100 year anniversary there were rumors of the very first principal of the school still <laughs> hanging about. Apparently, her old office was the girls' bathroom. No, so that raises a couple of concerns. 
Mm. Anyway, I went to check out the place. In the basement, at one point, they said that this location was a junior high. Yep. And they would hear noises of what sounded like a bunch of junior high kids goofing off in the locker room. Right. Well, I went down there. It was a fairly dull case. Nothing too exotic happened. You know, you're nothing happened. You're on a hunt. You start getting tired. All of a sudden, I hear what sounds like a bunch of idiot teenage boys goofing off in the next room. Right. It was the fucking water heater going off. Yeah. Now, you're an old building. Make a lot of noise. It does not take much. Now, going into water creatures, they say I live just like 15 minutes from the Snake River Canyon, from the evil right. cable jump. Yeah. They say in that stretch of water, there's some people who live around here who aren't, aren't from the area, who mm-hmm. moved here from California, who swear up and down. They've seen sharks. Right. Okay. That's that's quite... Now... The, I the mean, thing. Shark, no. I, I already know what it was. Well, to be purely honest with you, can I guess what it was? I mean, <laughs> if, it's, if it's... Right. The canyon is a freshwater canyon. Yes. Right, so... Sharks, most sharks are saltwater creatures. They can really live for long periods in salt water. Everybody knows that. Right. Yeah, there's there's some that can do there, there's, there's some there's some there's, yeah. there's, 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 there's some there's some. Like the pike, for instance, that's not actually actually classed as a freshwater shark. Mm. It's yeah. right. I'm betting it's something that's been there for a long time, but it's something well known. It's something that's been fished quite a lot. I wouldn't say perch, what's the other land? There's one that can grow really, really big. Oh, I don't know what it's called. Forgive me. My brain's melting. There's a fish that you get and it lives and it's famous for the waterways of America, I know that, but it it can get really, really big. I can't remember off my... Just, what is it? Sturgeon. Sturgeon. Is that the one you're thinking of? No, I and you're actually right. Because you see, there is actually a sturgeon hatchery just up the river. That oh. back in the day, anybody can go up to and see the, go yeah. see the fish while they're still in their hatchery tanks. And these things get massive. Yeah. Now, oh, yeah. there was one year, they go to release the sturgeon out into the water so, so they can go out. They lay their eggs, have pat their yeah. young, and normally they come back. Not For normal. some reason, there's a few that didn't. Yeah. And they've been spotted out in the water, just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. There was one guy a few years back who caught one, one of them on video jumping out of the river, and it was getting close to 10 feet long. Yeah. I've seen, I've, I've seen, I've seen all the videos of them. And and I, see, it's maybe found it's it's maybe found it's it's perfect place. It's maybe found a place that's just not too deep, but deep enough. And there's loads of food, and it's nice and warm. It's just perfect for that, and it's just happy in that area. That's yeah, what it's they, have, huh. they know it's out there. It's still alive to this day. They can live up to like thirty years if they don't get end up killed. If they, yeah. It has a tracker on it. They know, know roughly where it's hanging about. They just, for some reason, when they went to let it out to go have some fun, it never wanted to come home. Yeah. Yeah. See, a lot of people, a lot of people today, when they first seen whales, they thought they were mythical creatures. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you, you talk about, what's, what's the biggest whale in the world? Is it the sperm whale? Blue whale. Is it the blue pill? Right, imagine yourself, imagine yourself, 1600s, and a wee wooden rickety boat, right, so I'm supposed to see, and you see that coming towards you. Massive thing. Oh, yeah. You're going to think to him, oh, my God, it's a sea creature that's going to get us. And, oh, my God. So he goes home. He goes home. He rose home. His wee boat. And then he tells everybody about this giant creature and then they draw pictures of it and they make it more angry than it looks and 
before you know it, there's legends of the giant creature that lives. Mm-hmm. You know, I think I think. See, I've heard a lot of legends about Loch Ness, right? There's a lot of legends that see the castle that sits next to Loch Ness. Mm-hmm. That the creature would hang about there, right? That's where most of the sightings happen. Yeah, and it makes you wonder. It makes you wonder why did it hang about there? Think about it. Why did it hang about there? What did what do eels actually eat? Do they, they, eat, they eat like microorganisms and they eat like little fish and stuff like that? They you notice it's smaller quite, than it. But here's an interesting fact: if you notice with the the brickwork, you know the brickwork, the rocks round about the castle, right? It's rich in mussels and stuff. Mm-hmm. What happens if it's that as one of its feeding grounds? And that's why a lot of people see it. Food source. Exactly, that would be so. Be the, food source. That would be the best way. To, if you're ever out trying to look for an animal, you want to look for a place it can hide, you get a place of source of water, and source of food. In fact, I went before he, we had him on the show, I talked to, with Jeff Melton about some advice on a Bigfoot case. Yeah. And one kind of a rule of thumb he gave me was that if I'm looking for a large omnivore, mm-hmm. trying to look for where it may be hiding, mm-hmm. think of what a bear might do. Yeah. It likes food. Leave it, leave it treats out like Snickers bars and Mars bars and stuff like that. Yeah, but then when it comes to bears, if they get too friendly with humans, wildlife services have to shoot them. I've noticed that. I've I've noticed that. I had that happen when I went to Oregon a couple of years ago. There was this little baby black bear that was just, that was real friendly to walk up to people and got food. I found out what, later when I got home that they shot it. Shot it. It's like you yeah. fuckers. Mm-hmm. Now I get why they had to do it. It's oh, also the same it. reason why there's a scoreboard between bisons and humans at Yellowstone right now because the fucking humans can't leave the animals alone. No, and they get used to humans and then wander up to humans and then it's like it's like they take the bear, they'll get used to humans, or they'll go, oh, they're a human, he's got a Mars bar. So you'll uh, go up to see the, the humans and then... Saying, Fuck you, I'm going to kill you. I, well, I'm talking about the bears, I'm talking about the bears. The bears will know that the humans have got Mars bars, or Twixies or whatever. They'll go up to them and then they'll not have the mud bars that and they'll go mad and eat one of them. That's why they have to shoot them. They have to try and make them no use to humans. It's a bit of a worst case scenario, but most times when it comes to bears, hopefully they've gotten their, uh, they had a recent sexual release. And I have to say that because this is legitimate animal advice yeah. or they've had somewhat of a meal. Because with bears, when they're fairly docile, they act like big dogs. Yeah. It's like, right, going back to these mythical creatures under the sea, I mean, right, sea seals. They were actually mistaken as mermaids. Did you know that? Wouldn't take much when you think about it. You look at their faces, right? Yeah, I don't know if you're human, but they have got a, quite a, a strange looking face. In the ancient times, they actually mistook them as mermaids, because they would lie in the rocks where the ships would crash into, right? And then the old legends would come that the, the women, the mermaid women, would lure them in to the, to the dangerous rocks, but in actual fact, they're just seals. Uh, well, that, that's... Again, this is where my earlier example, when we pulled out the whale penis, I that no. probably should have worded that a little differently, but you, you have to think, these are sailors, they're tired, they're yeah. hungry, probably yeah. a little thirsty. Fuck They're gonna. Man. That is enough to cause mm. a little bit of hallucination. Like, if you see something that has the remote figure of what looks like a woman, chances are they hadn't had a release. Yeah. And be look, like most men and think with their dicks and do something stupid and get them killed. Look, there's been there's been cases where lighthouse keepers they don't use lighthouse keepers anymore. They use them they use computers, right? But anyway. There's been cases where lighthouse keepers in like the 18th century, 17th, 18th century would see strange creatures. But you think about it, you're in that lighthouse for what, two months? And you do not see another soul 
you're the only guy, there's usually two, there's the only the two he's in that lighthouse, right, together for three months. Right, can you imagine that? Can you imagine spending three months with me, Dakota? But anyway, eh, <laughs> the boat would come to pick us up and he'd be the only one stalling. But anyway, <laughs> but here's the thing, right, you go up at night and you, go and you look and you see some strange thing, you see that sticking out of the water, that whale penis, right? Sticking out of the water, you're going to think, oh my god, it's a mythical creature! But in actual fact, it's just a whale penis. And, you know, and, uh, and when it comes to the water monsters all together, yeah, I know this is supposed to be kind of a sea monster theme episode, but... It's a sea monster, that, kind of, uh, it's the same kind of thing. But, but the same rules apply, but when you think about it, let's take the jackalope as an example. All right. Yeah, it's supposed to be a rabbit with what looks like deer antlers. Yes. Now, this is, if, you go to see, if you go to, like, sea creatures, you have the narwhal. Yes. It has its long horn. They're not exactly sure what it's used for. They think it's for fighting, think it's for mating, but then again, mm-hmm. there's some weirder sexual rituals out in the animal kingdom. Chances are, when it comes to a jackalope, if you think you see one, chances mm-hmm. are you're seeing a rabbit that's very ill. Because yeah. there's certain types of tumors that can actually grow and cause like bony like structures yeah. and they look like horns. Humans can get them. Yeah. It's, the world is a very strange place. And a lot of the time when somebody sees a strange thing, it's nothing more than an illusion. It's something it's something that's it's just a, a, a act in nature. I mean, as you say, it's no a strange monster for the blackness of the water. Yeah, you know I mean, it's a Neil. Or it's some other mythical creature, you know? Yeah, there's tales out, there's tales out there, the other fishermen, oh, why, why, the, the, the mermaids would take you to the depths of the sea, the depths of the sea. A lot of that, 99% of that, is a load of absolute rubbish. Can you tell me the thing, can you remember when they did that spoof documentary about the mermaids? Oh my god. <laughs> Even the fucking follow up one? Right. Like, how many people they freaked out with that? How many people were fooled with that? I know, people, I know people that thought that was real. I, they had me fooled at first. <laughs> I'll, I'll say it. But here's here's the thing. They say officially the reason why they put that out was to try to engage the conversation. Now, there's a lot of very valid points in that. Say, like, the body fat of humans. Yeah. Why do we have that? We have adaptions that help us that if we train our bodies enough, we can live in the water. There's actually oh, yeah. a group of people alive today who live in mostly huts above water That's right. whose eyes have actually developed to help them naturally see better underwater. Yeah. Yeah. Our bodies can be trained to do miraculous things. Why do we have those adaptations? Now, they say there are some sort of mermaid-like creatures out there, and that's actually yeah. a show I would like to do, because there's mm-hmm. some girl out there who's claiming to get video of them. I was like, i got to find more about this. They have me curious. Yeah. But nevertheless, you never know what's quite out there. And as far as the term paranormal or supernatural, a lot of people don't forget. A lot of people seem to forget. Those are very relative terms. Think about everything we do that seems normal to us nowadays that may have been considered magic back then. Oh, good God. I mean, we've, we've got machines that can stay under the water for five years. They're called nuclear submarines. Right? Just Technology the, is beyond, is beyond we, anything. Just the simple stuff we use to maintain this podcast. Yeah. Think about it. Two idiots who have never officially met yeah. in person. You're neither of them. You're neither of them in Scotland. I mean, yeah, think, granted. Can, you imagine, can you imagine that? I mean, granted, I mean, from well, it sounds like we may have missed each other when I actually visited Scotland. Yeah, we may have missed each other in the wind. So I think I did see you while I was over there while I'm now thinking about oh, it. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm a character in my home village, you know. Wave at me and stuff. 
well, yeah, you probably would have seen me. You know, I'm freakishly tall, and I think do think Jared Butler almost hit me with his car. But yeah, if you had to bring somebody from the 1600s to the now, well, I mean, first of all, they would think we were dealing in black magic because of the technology. I mean, you're in Idaho, and I'm in Scotland right now, right? I'm sitting here with an iPhone and an iPad and a laptop and got multiple screens and I can see whether there's people in the chat there for England, there's people in the chat there for America, there's people in the chat for Canada, there's people in the chat for all over the world, right? I think a lot of things can be explained, right? But there is things in this world that can't be explained. You can go to the UFO theme where you talk about USOs, you know what I mean, underwater objects, and a lot of them have been classed as like strange creatures, but in actual fact it's just some type of alien or whatever it is, ship under the water. We will probably never know until that is released to us. I mean, think about it. Well, you know, kind of stripped away here because mm-hmm. we're talking about how things come to life. Remember how we have had numerous discussions where you go to try to say time doesn't actually exist, but then mm-hmm. I go to say, no, there's m- probably more dimensions to it like there is. Well, there's multiple dimensions, I. Well, what was that breaking yeah. news article I sent you? They actually figured out how to get a state of matter using the Fibonacci Fabin- sequence, look, which I think look, I'm mispronouncing, which yeah. has a second dimension of time. And look, I, thought, I find it kind of funny. That same frequency look, that they used to achieve that is in the CE5 protocols. But here's an interesting fact that you've, you've just brought up. You're talking about different realities. Yeah, there's different realities for me right now, and there's different realities for people in chat, and there's different realities for you around the That doesn't mean to say... That means to say that that only sticks to land, guys. There could be different realities eh, underwater. Different creatures for those realities. Mm-hmm. What it takes is a wee open for another reality. And that thing can come through and then go back again. Mm-hmm. What's that in the chat there? Seahorses are stunning. What was that? Yeah. Doby Sock, they are just are beautiful little creatures. There you go. Yeah. Can it turn into a pirate than they are my heart is I think I know I'm a terrible you're kind of going back to earlier examples we were talking about how you know you're not used to certain forms of life well if you're sailor coming out of Europe you (laughs) European settlers pretty much hunted down most of your exotic wildlife to where the most exotic thing you see is a fucking hedgehog Look, it wasn't it. It wasn't until a certain time when they realised that there was such a thing as penguins or polar bears. Exactly. It's. It was. I think it was. What was it? Polar bears were discovered in the sixteenth century, seventeenth century. I mean, like yeah. I mean, there's there's places in this world where they're finding new spiders and new what they follow arachnophobia or something like that. They have just went and said, that guys, I couldn't help myself. Arachnophobia. And there's a good film. You ever seen that one? With the spiders and they're on your house. You're lying oh. in your bed and they're all crawling up their bed and stuff like that. <laughs> I'm sorry, ladies yeah, and gentlemen. Yeah, the, the, there, was, there was only one movie my mother ever, never let wa- us watch in the house was that Arachnophobia. Oh, because I, honestly, she has a huge fear of spiders. What about, what about the film Prana? Oh, yeah. no, that was, that was totally fine. You know, I mean, think about it, ladies and gentlemen. Now, somewhere in your house, there's spiders. And they're just looking at you. They're waiting for you to turn that light off. <laughs> Any complaints, please send them to Bald and Bonkers. Do we have an email address for actually complaints? Yeah, you can go. For, I think you can just send uh, uh, us an email at Bald and Bonkers. Uh, send us an email at Bald and Bonkers at gmail.com. Or you can write our new office. Yeah. Or I can just see the new. I'm very disturbed with this person. I'm very disturbed at you showing a whale penis. I have well, never seen anything like it. Well, guess what? <laughs> the point of these shows <laughs> is to have an unrestricted <laughs> discussion. No, no, I'm just going to say it because <laughs> you know 
you know there's going to be somebody out there, probably yeah. some loser, who, despite saying they hate us with their guts, can't, can't stop watching us because haters will keep an eye on you closer than the people that actually yeah. support you. Uh, now, I will say this. If you're disturbed by the fact that I showed a legitimate picture of a whale's penis, these shows are meant to have an unrestricted discussion. <laughs> and unfortunately, yeah. sometimes we have to get a little di- gross and a little grotesque. But dear God, I hope I never have that thing come at me if I'm swimming in the ocean. What's that, Pete? I one washed up on the beach and I of us saved it. I hope you're not talking about a whale's tinky winky or whatever it's called, you know. I can just see you running out the new to, to shove it back into the sea. Oh well honestly you've got to have a laugh. You've got to have a laugh and there's people out there that take things too seriously. Especially in this community, especially in the paranormal and UFO community lately. Take things to a new level uh, of madness. I mean, you know? ghosts, cryptids, UFOs. Oh, God. You're yeah. going to find trash everywhere. And unfortunately, yeah. some people that are pretty much highly respected right now are unfortunately trying to use that drama to stir up shit because that seems to be the only way to yeah, actually get I people know. to pay attention. But you know something, we're better than that, so we'll stay uh, Yeah, well, you know. I, yeah, I know we've had issues in the past, but we're trying to move forward. And, you know, I got to thinking about it. There's this constant reference to jellyfish in the chat. You That's think about this. Yeah. Here, here's, a, here's a thought that just came to me. Yeah. They say that there's actually been several new species of animals that have emerged due to human interference. Yes. There's like a new type of killer whale, things like that. I'm not sure. They also say that with rising ocean temperatures, yes, that environment's going to be a lot more favorable for jellyfish. I'm going to put something out here, right? I, re- I remember I was out in a boat once, right? And there was a nuclear station and it and you know how nuclear power stations are sucking the seawater and then they fire the hot water out after they've had... Right? There was a bit where the outlet was and everybody was swimming on it. I shit you not, everybody's like, oh, this is great. And they say it's fine. But... <laughs> Seriously, they've got a bit of, You can swim. They're, they're swimming on it. You know what some people like? And I was fishing, right? And I caught a fish. And these fish are only meant to come in size like this, but it came in size like that. <laughs> and it wasn't because it was the radiation, guys. It was because the water was warmer, right? It was because the water was warmer. But then it makes you wonder, right? Look at that Fukushima. Look at Fukushima. All that nuclear radioactive raw waste that's been getting into the sea. Oh, yeah. Can you yeah. imagine any defects or creatures with ten eyeballs and stuff like that? Can you imagine... The defects. Um, well, now that you've got to bring that up, I have heard of, of people swimming in nuclear tanks because, uh, well, I mm. actually have an aunt who used to work at one of the nuclear lab here in Idaho. So, yeah. yeah. Anyway, here's the goes to think. Yes, let's see, like frogs and fish are often known as like indicator species because their DNA is. Basically, if something is messed up in the environment, they're one of the first things to start showing signs. That's where you get the fish with the extra eyeballs, the frogs with extra legs, uh. things like that. When you think about it, if those things survive enough, yeah, sure. If those things I survive, said enough, it's for the North Pole. Cool. Okay. Cool. If those things survive long enough and they're able to breed and keep going and going and going. That, in essence, could create several new species. Well, you, yeah. You think about it, that radiation, right? Let's just take this. There was a nail, right? So let's, take, let's just think about this, right? There's a nail that grows to an overwhelming size, right? All of a sudden, it's swimming in water that's highly radioactive, right? It's pregnant. Right, so it absorbs some of that radioactivity, right? And it gives birth to another seal, and that other seal has got two extra eyeballs. 
right? That other seal grows up, and then it gives birth to another seal, right? Another eel, sorry, seal to a seal, an eel. And it gives birth to something with four eyes and just a slightly different defect. But every time that happens, every time it gives birth, I mean, you think about it, you look at how how animals have, I mean, they say about the chicken, right? What came first, the chicken or the egg? Which is a naturally interesting thing, right? They say chickens are related to the dinosaurs, birds are related to the dinosaurs, right? But that's what people think that happened overnight. No, it didn't. It took a long time. Mm-hmm. It was born, and then it maybe, and then another one was born, well, be by a difference, then another one was born. And this happened over millions of years. Scary, isn't it? A little bit, but you also got to remember, there's actually some species that have been shown to be able to evolve into new species within a matter of days. Now, granted, these are usually bugs. There was actually an, uh, an experiment where someone kept, like, common house flies, ones that got exposed to constant daylight, ones that got saw nothing but darkness. Mm-hmm. After a few days, I think it was, like, after a couple weeks, actually, those were two completely different species. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, think it, right, let's think about humans, right? The Earth was created... Some people say, some people say we started off with microorganisms in the sea, right? Then those microorganisms turned into land creatures. Those land creatures turned into multiple different creatures. And then the creatures turned into monkeys and chimpanzees, hence became humans. I've got my other theories on that, which I'm not going to talk about the now. But that's what they say that happened. And that's interesting with Dolby saying about the jellyfish around Oban, right? It was a hot summer, right? I wonder if that'll happen this year with the hot weather. Have you ever seen a jellyfish under the water? How beautiful it looks. How they're oh, yeah. transparent. And you get mutations in jellyfish. A lot of mutations in jellyfish. Mm-hmm. But there you well, go. jellyfish, they don't really have a lot to them, so they're a lot yeah. easier to manipulate like that. Jellyfish yeah. have no brain, so which is quite interesting, isn't it? It doesn't have a brain. It doesn't have like it's, you'd wonder how something like it's quite, it's quite hard to understand for a human. It doesn't have a brain. You think about the things that's deep under the sea. There's, I mean, there's creatures that live in constant darkness that don't have eyes. I mean, think about it. There's that uh, volcano, undersea volcano that erupted mm-hmm. not too long ago that actually released a population of sharks that knew how to that were adapted to bring in the sulfuric acid that was in the water. Yes, and then it makes you wonder if it's in other worlds, you know, that's mostly at sea. It's it's an amazing thing. We'll we'll see if we can get someone to come on. So, Dakota, tomorrow's show, what's it about? Something sea-related again? Yes, yeah, Yes, yes, yes. We are going to have the epic discussion of whether or not Jack could have jumped on that door with Rose as we discussed the Titanic. Yes. <laughs> We're talking about there's some amazing pictures of inside, outside the Titanic that I've managed to get, which I will be uploading uh, tomorrow. Uh, we'll be discussing ghost stories, and people will say, what, the Titanic? What, how do you know it's under the water? No. They've brought things back, put them in museums, and the museums are haunted because of these artefacts, which is a well-known thing, you know. Oh, but yeah. I think that's going to make an absolutely fascinating show, the Titanic show, you know. So, Dakota, what have you got to be doing the rest of the night? Looking, sorting through, oh. sorting through all the hate mail that's came to you through the mailbox. Oh, uh, yeah, pro- oh, yeah, that's... Uh... You know, like I said, Ball and Bonkers does now have a an official address, so that uh, will definitely help us out in the long run. Uh, there's going to be some new merch up in the store very soon. Uh, there's actually now a military discount, so you know, military law enforcement. You know, we want to support you. I was just going to say that was the one for law enforcement. 
Yeah, well, we'll just group them, group them all under the same thing. And I will say this because this is what my mother does for a living, and she gets upset every time people don't include them. But mm. you know, police dispatchers. Yes, we do too. And I'm not I, just saying that because my mother's one. <laughs> yeah, I will say that's the, the police nine one one operators. That's what they're called. This nine one one operators, isn't it? Dispatch. I will say they did an amazing job because you think about it, they've got to phone someone phones them, say they've witnessed a murder or something's happened, and they've got to try and speak to them calmly to tell them mm -hmm. what to do. Oh yeah, and thank you, thank you for what you're doing. So there you go. Yeah, it's it's a hard. The world we're in right now is is really bad, right. and the law enforcement in particular is getting a hard time here. You know. Oh yeah, especially over here in the states, and you got, yeah. also got to think about it. My mom always tells me I hear stories of some of the stuff she deals with. Uh, it, technically, she's not supposed to tell me, but there's a gray area where she doesn't say names. She's okay, but if it comes out on the drug, whatever. One of the hardest things that I've ever been told, and I've heard this from multiple ones, is that mm -hmm. when it comes to the nine one one operators or nine 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 or whatever your local emergency distinction may be. The hardest part is that often they don't hear the end of the story. That's what I was thinking because when the police turn up, they hang up. Not always. Not but always. yeah, it was like, um, now granted, cops, dispatchers, firemen, medics, they all gossip, so mm -hmm. chances are they'll find out eventually. Yeah. But nevertheless. Mm -hmm. So... So before we go, what's that Sherry saying in there? She's asking if there's any toys in the shop here. Actually, I, that, there's a, something I should probably clear up, and I'm sure Alan will probably be relieved at this news. Look, Chris, listen to what I just said. Alan would be relieved. Right. There was issues with the lingerie supplier, so we had to cut off ties. And right. my dumb ass accidentally hit the wrong button, so I'm having to remake a bunch of shit. Mm. So the lingerie has been severely cut back. There you go. The series is depressing. Oh, God. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. If you're wanting to visit the shop, please do. Uh, do you don't get you don't get a pair with your face on it? That's one of the things that accidentally got deleted. Oh, that's terrible. You mean, oh, your face about, is on there too, what, motherfucker. No, no. <laughs> Wait, what about what about um, Mike the Naked Bigfoot? Um, what about how many we making a special T-shirt for him? Remember oh, to give us permission. I thought he said that we didn't have to go with it ever since we hooked him up with Dave Schrader. No, no, no. I'm making a T-shirt with his, with his face on it for him. Yeah, you know, I should probably use the oh. use the, um, the thumbnail I used for the Lost Magic episode. And I would like to say this too, ladies and gentlemen, coming soon there will be a special show with Mike the Naked Bigfoot coming on to talk about voodoo and zombies. So you can imagine that's going to be one of our Halloween themed episodes. Yes, yes. Because it is going to be about that time. But there, uh, there will be some uh, Halloween costumes available in the store. Aye, well, Dakota's dressed up as Uncle Fester. <laughs> you know, the number of times I get that comment, my God. You know, I should get a fake beard, because when I, I'm going to put these specs on, and the reason why I got these is to make fun of him. It's like mini me, isn't it? If I had, a, like, a bit of a better beard, doesn't it kind of look like it could pull off a Barry Fitzgerald look? You, you probably could. Yes. I actually... Uh, he kinda, I he, he, he does. Have you noticed that with people with beards? They play with their beards. They I, I wish I had that. It's like, I actually got told that... You know? I actually got told that if I was a little skinnier, I would put off hot nerve vibes with those on. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. good to know when I'm in my 40s and likely will need glasses. Can I ask you something, Dakota? When will the Bald and Bonkers calendar be released? Calendar. I'm just, I just, it just popped into my head. Uh, into my head. There you go, because of you and different pauses, you know, Mike. Actually, um, that's now an option. Chad for the, 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 
Smith family paranormal. We could get him in his marine uniform, you know. Yeah, that's actually now an option. Is it no? Oh, it, it's not. I said it's it now an option. I can, as just see can it. now do it. I can see the new Chad. I will put Chad in September in his marine oh. outfit, you know, polishing his gun. Yeah. So yeah, he's glad he can't take it off. TSA yeah. won't let him take it on the airplane. I know, I know. So, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you all have a fantastic Saturday night. Me and Dakota, we're going to head into the back into the the dungeon of despair. And uh, remember, be spooky. Have a great night, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow night for discussions of ghosts of the Titanic. Yes. Be sure to tune in to that episode. Be sure to check us out on all of our platforms. Links are in the description. For those of you who are complaining that the links are in the de- not in that description, check the flow page because it's a lot easier to update yes. that because of some of social media platforms only allow one link. A lot of amazing projects coming up. Um, yes, I'll probably be disappearing for a couple weeks because we're mm-hmm. in, only in the final stages of this damn move. But when we go mm-hmm. to come back, there's going to be a lot a lot of new stuff coming about that and maybe maybe some new recruits to the Bald and Bonkers team. Yes. So Goodbye everyone. Have a great night. All right. Thank you for all us, stay safe. Stay cooled off in this fucking heat for those of us in the northern hemisphere. Mm. Oh my God, I'm sweat myself abroad if I'm not careful. There you go. Yeah. Right, catch you later, guys. See you tomorrow, and have a great night. Bye. 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 Come on. Sherry, don't go playing with the whale penis. Mm-hmm. Sherry, you've been told.